What's going on guys? Bengal again here, back for another franchise off-season. Giants franchise season two. Obviously the season didn't exactly finish the way we would have liked. Losing in the conference championship to the Cowboys. If you didn't know that, it's on you. It's on you. However, this is always a really big episode because it is the real growth point for the series, for the team. And we did really well in last year's draft. To cap it off, I'll tell you, we took Cody Bailey with our first pick. He had an up and down rookie season. He was only normal development, but he was in the mid to high 70s for overall. At the end of the year, ended up working up to star development in 80 overall. He is our starting quarterback going forward. However, he is not alone on the offense. Had a couple of big rookies. Nick Duvall was his go-to target. 6'4", 240 out of Stanford. Enjoyed a phenomenal rookie year. Ended up getting all the way up to Superstar X Factor from Superstar. And he had well over 1,000 yards receiving. Nearly 100 catches and 8 touchdowns. He was fantastic. It took a minute for Larry Smith to become more of a focal point of the offense. And with his blazing speed, now up to 98. Actually, I think it was 98 the whole time. But spectacular catch, also very high. It was only a matter of time before he started making a ton of plays. And I think we really saw that down the stretch, especially in the playoffs. He was really, really awesome, even though we, of course, ran the ball frequently with Saquon Barkley. Jaden Rhodes, very good second rookie tight end as well. And then defensively, we were really carried by the Don. Dontrell Cobb started out as normal development. L's were in the whole chat when we took him. But how could you boo a 22-year-old at the time linebacker who's 6'2", 245, with 90 speed? It was only a matter of time before the rest of the attributes started to fill in, before his game really evolved, and he was unbelievable unbelievable as a rookie so you'd think that sky is the limit here in the future and he's got a teammate linebacker caleb claiborne from notre dame in this draft Derek cooper was a pleasant surprise he was someone that was just you know we'll take an athlete down the board ended up having some real chops as a pass rusher and even though he was injured you know more frequently more frequently than i would have liked he was pretty good when he was on the field and 92 speed is electric we're gonna hopefully see more of him in season two and then we also had akil edmonds who's been moved back to safety maybe more of a true fit for him despite not having electric speed we still have needs dexter lawrence is a free agent tay crowder is a free agent julian love is a free agent so some tough decisions about who to bring back who to retain who to resign and who to let walk if you go into the 2023 season recap you can see that the Dallas Cowboys in our own division won the Super Bowl after defeating us in the NFC Championship, and they beat a very good team in the Buffalo Bills led by Josh Allen. They won their sixth Super Bowl, and they were led by Demarcus Lawrence, winning Super Bowl MVP on the defensive line. For yearly awards, Justin Herbert, of course, won MVP, had a really, really good season. Obviously, if he was the league's most valuable player. Doug Peterson, coach of the year for the Jaguars, and then no shock at all, Cooper Cup wins Offensive Player of the Year. But look at that. Middle linebacker, Dontrell Cobb, wins not only Defensive Rookie of the Year, but Defensive Player of the Year. Quarterback Pat Burr of the Panthers is your Offensive Rookie of the Year. But I would say, all in all, a very productive season for many of our stars. We were up near the top of the league in you know a few different attributes. Threw, you know, too many interceptions early, but Cody Bailey started to figure it out. More of a checkdown oriented offense at some times, but that's successful offense if you can still continue to pick up first downs and move the football. Patrick Mahomes was great too. I think you could make a real argument that he should have been the MVP, but Herbert, despite having 500 fewer yards, had eight more touchdowns and fewer interceptions, and he threw the ball less. So he was better uh, per attempt. I think you could probably say, despite Mahomes having more yards per attempt. And then Saquon Barkley, if not for getting tired, probably would have been even higher up on this list, at least above Najee Harris for rushing yards. A stamina issue kind of kept him out of the game at times near the, near the end of the year. But 81 rush yards per game, only fumbled once, had nine touchdowns. 
I think he was pretty awesome. 4.7 yards per carry, receiving. Cooper Cup, obviously, at the very top there. But first tight end, Travis Kelsey, best in the league, I think we could agree, as a receiver. Not too far behind him was a rookie, Nick Duvall. So really like what our future looks like. And then for sacks, I don't see Kayvon Thibodeau on here. It's just kind of a glitch where sometimes some players don't show up. Von Miller led the league in sacks at 21 and a half. Eight picks for Bryce Hall and Dontrell Cobb, the linebacker. Pretty unbelievable. And kind of a bit before we would get to Darnay Holmes. But if you check out the Giants individually here, we can see that Kayvon Thibodeau had 15 sacks. Very good number. And Aziz Ojolari, with an excellent second half of the season, ended up with double digits as well. And Darnay Holmes did have seven interceptions not shown. But the rest of the team didn't really produce too many. We're looking to change that this year. DB is going to be a focus. I like Xavier McKinney. He signed a contract extension with us this year. However, I'm not sure that his future is at free safety. Might be at strong safety. Who knows what role Akeel Edmonds will play this year. But the corners, despite being productive at times in terms of interceptions, leave a little bit to be desired. Darnay Holmes was either a big play, big play Darnay, or allowing a big play. So he was up and down, I think, as a 5'10 corner. Probably will end up being relegated to the slot, which there's no shame in that, especially with the amount of nickel packages you see against three and four receiver sets. He's just not a boundary guy. So that's something we're looking to improve this offseason as I think we will look to not only safety, but potentially corner, potentially linebacker. There are some real needs on this team. The top two players that are in my consideration at safety, Bryson Hendricks from Florida State, 23-year-old safety, good size, very well-rounded, B for everything, good man, end zone skills with great to elite speed, could be a real burner. Or you have the option for Gore, Glenn Gore, 6'2", 201 pounds, 22 years old out of Oregon, B hit power, B tackle, but where Braxton, is it not Braxton Turner, that's Detroit Lions franchise, where Bryson, is, I knew it was some white name, despite, you know, whatever, uh, despite Bryson Hendricks having B-man and B-zone, Glenn Gore trades one for the other, has higher zone at an A, but lower man at a C. There are another, you know, bunch of players on my favorites list. John Bost, I like quite a bit. Caleb Claiborne. There are some interesting, intriguing players down the board. I especially like the idea of taking some of these interior defensive linemen. But I would say this draft, more than last year, I really don't have any idea how it's going to go. So the only way to find out is to jump right into it. And we'll start this offseason. I think we have a pretty good idea about our team situation. I think we have a pretty good idea about the players we could add to our team through the draft. What we don't know is free agency, how that will impact things. But what I do know is we have $144 million in available salary cap to figure it out. Mock Draft 3, the number one overall projected pick is Nick Gordon from Oregon, a quarterback, and there might be a run on quarterbacks. Three in the top four, Alexander or Alexander Obel out of Iowa, at number two to the Saints, J.C. Bolden, an outside linebacker out of Tennessee, projected to go to the Jets, and then Pat Northcutt there to the Vikings. One of our top targets, Bryson Hendricks, is projected to be a top five pick going to be tough to get him. We pick at number 28 and we pick at number 30 in the first round. We would have to move up considerably if we were going to get him. However, we would also have to move up quite a bit for a number of players. Robert Force set up 16 spots to the top 10. And that's a corner I was looking at. Glenn Gore up two spots to number 11. Would we have to move up into the top 10 to take him if we wanted to? Trayvon Brown, down four spots. Another player I am quite fond of. Looks very, very good. As you can see, our projected picks coming up. John Bost out of Bama. Won't be a first-round pick. And then Eric Brown out of Alabama as well. Both guys projected down the board, but they're at the top of my draft board. So the CPU thinks, oh, 
you're going to take them in round one, but that's not going to happen. But this is big. Players ready to negotiate. 15 that either need extensions or will walk. We have some undrafted rookie free agents. Skylar Styles, Brock Cook, our starting punter from this past year. And now we get into some of the big dogs. Dexter Lawrence, Tay Crowder, Melvin Gordon, Joe Hayden, Deontay Foreman, Bobby Massey, Keith Ismail. A lot of these players were just on the team because of filling a veteran role. Uh, Jordan Hicks didn't satisfy that requirement, doesn't really want to come back. And as you can see, some of the players that do want to come back, Maurice Hurst, Jamie Collins, but the interest is not always going to be mutual, Deontay Foreman. Here's the deal. Tay Crowder is the first tough decision. He's 27 years old at a 76 overall, wants a two-year deal. And apparently, Cody Bailey has been upgraded to the franchise QB tag. And Tay Crowder's interest has grown significantly. A two-year deal is not out of the question to me. He'd be 29 years old by the time his contract ends. $3 million per year is not all that bad. If we can bring it down just a little bit, just under $3 mil, this would be a contract I would be okay with having. He, at this point, would be a good veteran presence in the locker room and someone that we know is at least good enough. He's more technician than athlete, unfortunately, where the position seems to be trending more towards athletes. He's not terrible, but we saw it in the playoffs. He couldn't keep up with a running back, a fullback rather, in Reggie Gilliam down the field, and we allowed a huge play. We are going to offer him this extension, though. And Tay Crowder, not coming back, at least not for now, going to test free agency. We could franchise tag him for 18 mil. Probably not going to do that. I am going to go ahead and negotiate with Dexter Lawrence, though. So he does have interest in returning. He's 26 years old. I would be willing to give him another year from what he's asking for. And the money really isn't too bad. I think I would take the bonus down slightly. But this contract to me seems pretty good. Dexter Lawrence, four years, average salary of three and a half mil, bonus of seven mil. That would take the cap hit as high as 11.3 in the final year of his deal. But this is someone that should end up being pretty good. Now, I don't think it's guaranteed that he accepts this, but you'd think with interest already in the team that Dexter Lawrence will be returning. Good player for the Giants and should hopefully stay here. And he will. Dexter Lawrence returns on a four-year contract worth roughly 10 mil per year. I think it's a good signing. He's been a good player for us. He fits the defense really well. We're moving back to a 3-4. He's a nose tackle. It fits. He offers us a little bit of pass rush upside as well. It's just a good fit for the team. Doesn't mean we're not looking to upgrade the interior of our defensive line. For sure, looking at that at the very least. But Dexter Lawrence is someone that I think was a must re-sign. As for the rest of these guys... Melvin Gordon, wrong side of 30. Joe Hayden, certainly not. Deontay Foreman really didn't see the field all that much. Is asking for a bit too much, in my opinion, for what he is. And I think with the rest of these players, maybe Maurice Hurst could come back. A little bit too expensive, honestly. But I think with the rest of these guys, if we want a veteran, if we want someone that's going to help mentor some of our young players. That's something that can be done in the preseason. Don't really need to do that now and tie up some funds. I do think Brock Cook played pretty well for us. He was an undrafted rookie free agent punter. He's only 23 years old. He was a fine combo with Wyatt Anthony. And he's got a pretty big leg on him. 97 kick power, decent speed too. Decent kick accuracy. Yeah, I think Brock Cook is probably someone that we do want to re-sign. I would say maybe a three-year deal and then just not have to worry about it. He wants to come back. He likes the big market as the punter on some Steve Weatherford stuff. 
we're a league favorite. He wants to win a Super Bowl. He wants the franchise quarterback. Brock Cook, welcome back to the Big Blue Wrecking Crew. Brock Cook will stay a giant for the next couple of seasons. And I think the rest can walk. Skylar Styles just, he wants to be in warm weather back home in Mississippi. We don't need him. Combine results. This is big. This is huge. This is move face cam over so we can see. Huge. So, I think first things first, we got to look at free safety. These are our two guys. We'll take a look at Glenn Gore for, actually, you know, we'll take a look at Luke Tyson first. Because he was someone that's a little bit of an under-the-radar talent. Great speed ends up being 4.53 in the 40, which was the 8th fastest. And the big thing about the combine, by the way, is the ranges go away. It's no longer uh, good to great, great to elite. We know exactly what it is, and we have the times to match it up. Good vertical, good broad jump, good speed, good agility. Luke Tyson, if we miss out, could be somebody worth bringing in. But I'm not sure it's going to come to that. Glenn Gore, let's take a look. Ends up with great acceleration, elite agility, great speed at 4.49 in the 40. Great strength as well. Good change of direction. Jumping is only solid, but he had the third highest vertical jump. Interesting. As for Bryson Hendricks, had great to elite speed in the grades, ends up with elite speed, ran 4-3-9. Great acceleration, great agility, good change of direction, great jumping, had the highest vertical jump and the highest broad jump. Bryson Hendricks is a pretty good athlete and can play. That's tough. To the corners, Robert Forsett is one that I like quite a bit. He ended up with great speed, elite acceleration, ran 4-3-6. I also believe he won the best corner in the nation award, which we'll say best DB. He won the Thorpe Award at Iowa. Robert Forsett can play a little bit. B-man, B-press, C-zone, not bad. His teammate, Paul Burke, you worried a little bit more about him. He ends up with 4-4-3 speed. Elite acceleration, good speed. Not bad. Outside linebacker, the one that was most intriguing to me, of course, is John Bost. A pursuit, A tackle, A zone coverage down the board. Elite speed, elite acceleration, elite agility, great change of direction and jumping. Ran 4-6 flat at outside linebacker. Definitely not bad for a projected, you know, third or fourth rounder. It's pretty good. I wonder if any of these pass rushers are just freak athletes. No, James Parks is not. Nolan Hanna is not either. I think he had elite acceleration, though. Middle linebackers, I wasn't too impressed by any of these guys. I think I checked out Isaiah Mooney. Ran 4-4-6. Four, four, That's interesting. But the big one that I wanted to know about was Caleb Claiborne from Notre Dame. Ran 4.62. Elite speed, great acceleration, good to great for everything else except for strength. We know he's a solid player. Defensive tackle, Trayvon Brown, another really intriguing one. Great speed, elite strength. And he can, like, he has ability too. Hmm. John Contreras, great speed at 4.89. Matters a little bit less for defensive tackles, but if you can find, you know, a freak athlete, it's worth looking into. 4.8 flat for Gervonta Matthews, elite speed and acceleration. Very, very good player. Uh, and I don't think I was too interested in many of the players on offense. I think this is going to be more of a defensive draft, if I had to guess. However, we move into free agency. Nick Bosa is here. Justin Jefferson is here. The talent is overwhelming, almost. Justin Herbert, Rashawn Gary, 
Jeffrey Simmons has no interest. You'd be such a great fit for the defense. Why are you being like this? Would be very expensive though. Would be very expensive. Kenny Moore is here, another slot corner. So quarterback, we're not really interested in, but there are some talented players. Halfback, we do need depth for sure beyond Saquon Barkley. Um, who fits that the best? Jamal Williams would not be bad. I think I could offer Jamal Williams. What do you want? I think is a good question. He wants a three-year deal. Well, I'm not doing that. Probably not going to give you as much money as you want. I'd offer you something like that. He doesn't want it, but I don't know what his offers are going to look like. We could need a fullback. Remember, Skylar Styles did not want to come back. And Reggie Gilliam. We know about him. Reggie Gilliam is here. I mean, he sure looked pretty good when we played him in the conference championship. That's Andy Janovich. Just put me back up at the top, I think. Reggie Gilliam, 86 speed. I mean, he looked pretty quick. Yeah, he, he was all right. Um, I think it'd be kind of funny. <laughs> and there is mutual interest here. Uh, I'd offer Reggie Gilliam a contract, maybe something like that. Again, not a ton of interest, but he's a fullback. Receiver, not really a need for us. There's definitely talent here. Darnell Mooney, uh, but not really a need. Tight end, not really a need. Tackle, not a need. But on the interior, we might check around. JC Treader, Tyler Biadish. Um, Treader is not a bad call. He has seven teams interested. He's really more of a rental. Uh, we have Eric McCoy, though. So not really interested. Chris Lindstrom would be the one. If we're going to pay anybody, Chris Lindstrom would be worth a big contract, I think. He'd be fairly expensive, but we have it. A three-year deal. I'm comfortable with, with a four-year on him, probably. Don't really want to go quite that high on money. But Chris Lindstrom would really help us up front. There's a lot of mutual interest in there. We currently have the highest offer, which means we can probably even turn that down quite a bit and still be in pretty good position. Don't think that's too bad. Right tackle, not a need. And then on the defensive line, I'm looking really for a big body here. The one that would fit the best to me is Jeffrey Simmons, but he just doesn't really want to be here because of the scheme fit, which we just changed. I don't know what his scheme fit would be if it's not a base 3-4. It feels like the exact perfect scheme fit for Jeffrey Simmons. Uh, we'd have to pay him 20 mil plus per year. He's very good. I'm a big Jeffrey Simmons guy. Just, uh, you know, 25 million. That's kind of a big ask. I might just offer and see where that would put us. We're the only team offering... So, maybe we'll just leave that as it is and see what happens. Rashawn Gary is cool. You know, I, I wouldn't have him uh, at outside linebacker. We have Azizo Jalari. We have Derek Cooper, who I want to develop. He'd be on the, on the defensive line, actually, probably where uh, Leonard Williams is. Uh, linebacker, Isaiah Simmons is here. Isaiah Simmons is kind of like the vision for Derek, uh, Derek Cooper, but he's just not that good in coverage. Can't offer him right now, but might be something I consider. Right now we're at five of five for active negotiations. So we are locked up. Corner, Kenny Moore, Stefan Gilmore, Jalen Johnson, and no one has offered Jalen Johnson. Bryce Hall is here. Micah Hyde. John Johnson gave up on football in real life pretty much. <laughs> uh, all right. I think we'll go ahead and look at targeted. And we'll see if anything changes in here. Let's evaluate offers. So we've seen some signings one way or another. And we've made a big one. We've made two huge splashes, actually. 
Jeffrey Simmons has decided to sign on three years, 28.2 per year, a bonus over 40 mil. Uh, I guess he wants to win a championship. We lowballed him and he accepted. And that's a three year contract. Chris Lindstrom is coming to New Jersey for four years. That is a lot of money. We still have about 100 mil if we need it. But that is a major addition to our offense. Chris Lindstrom going to come in, start right away, probably at right guard. He is very, very good. Getting some bonuses right now, but we're getting an 86 overall player who's only 27 on the offensive line. That's big. Now, Jeffrey Simmons, on the other hand, is just a really, really good player. Leonard Williams is somebody who we re-signed, but he's 30 years old, and he's just, he's like Jeffrey Simmons light, right? And he's older. We just went out and got Jeffrey Simmons. So he's under contract for the next two years. Where does Jeffrey Simmons fit in this? I just, I think he's going to start. Uh, what could happen, what this could look like, is Kayvon Thibodeau, outside linebacker, still rush end. Leonard Williams starts at defensive end. And then Derek Cooper is still a rotational player. And then we could pick up another linebacker at some point. Either way, I mean, it gives us one of those problems where it's we got a lot of good players. Got a lot of good players. That just made us a very, very good team. Huge upgrades on both sides of the ball. Nick Bosa headed to the Tennessee Titans. I guess they're replacing Jeffrey Simmons. Not the same type of player at all, but still very good. No one's offered on Justin Jefferson. He's a great player, guys. It just doesn't make sense for the team right now, I think is the, is the only way I can phrase that. Same thing with Justin Herbert, right? Rashawn Gary, you know, same deal. We got Jeffrey Simmons and... Darius Slay is headed to the Ravens. Stefan Gilmore to the Chiefs. Bryce Hall to the Falcons. William Jackson to the Chargers. Jalen Johnson has one offer. Ah, oh, he's so good. He's such a talented player. I don't know. This is this is a difficult one. We have the money. More of a zone corner than a man corner. He's a little slow but talented. I don't know. I think I think it's worth offering on him and trying to bring him in. Uh, I think maybe maybe a two-year deal and then reevaluating that is something I might be interested in. Where would that put us in the negotiation? Just ahead of the Steelers, neck and neck. Yeah, I, I'd be willing to offer that. I'd be willing to offer that. Um, it's it's not really a huge, you know, commitment. He's definitely good, but not amazing. Uh, but really, his big thing is he can play on the outside, and I just haven't trusted Darnay Holmes to do that. So we're going to offer that, and we'll see what happens. And he is headed to Pittsburgh. Jalen Johnson joins the Steelers. We are still going after Reggie Gilliam and Jamal Williams. They're both holding out a little bit longer. Mock Draft 4 is out. Not much has changed. It seems actually like it's pretty locked in, except Nolan Hanna has shot up 17 spots into the top 10. Panthers now projected to get him. Oglesby drops a spot for set as a result. Glenn Gore stays in the same spot. But overall, not much has changed. Caleb Claiborne shot up 13 spots. So free agency appears to have changed quite a bit, actually. Adrian Lake sneaking in around one. 2023 retirements could change things. We saw some big ones last year. This time, we see J.J. Watt, Cameron Hayward, Calais Campbell, Tom Brady... Remember, he signed back with the Patriots. Well, he's retired now. Retired as a Patriot. Uh, some of the players that we brought in, you know, as, as veteran mentor leaders, they've retired. Randall Cobb, Lane Taylor, Riley Reef, 
Kyle Rudolph, John Bostic, Tyrod Taylor. A number of really good players. Matt Ryan, of course. You know, a lot of these guys, you know, they, they'd they seen better days. But still, you know, big players. Hard to tell the story of the NFL without many of those guys. Wow. Justin Herbert is headed to Pittsburgh. And Rashawn Gary is headed across the locker room. Has signed on with the Jets. Devin White to Cincinnati. Kenny Moore goes to the 49ers. Cam Akers to the Falcons. He's quite good in this. Uh, Stephon Gilmore to the Chiefs. John Johnson to the Panthers. Bobby Wagner headed to the Broncos. Not too far from where he played college football. We know about Jalen Johnson. Fletcher Cox to the Falcons. You know what I'm noticing? Derek Brown to the Titans as well. That's maybe their Jeffrey Simmons replacement. Jed Wills joining him. I'm not seeing, as Bryce Hall goes to the Falcons, Falcons spent a lot of money, but I'm not seeing anyone from our division, J.C. Treader too to the Titans, I'm not seeing anyone from our division really being that active. Isaiah Simmons is in here as well. He signed with the Vikings. He was somebody I was going to consider going after, but just didn't feel, didn't feel like the right move for us at the time. Kenny Galladay, still a free agent. There's interest there. I'm all right on that. <laughs> we'll probably pass. Fifth year options for us. These can get expensive. Kadarius Tony. So he might factor into my long-term plans, but it doesn't make sense to pay him like more than 10 mil a year for one year when we can potentially extend him or just lose him. So I'm, I'm not really interested in picking up really any fifth-year options unless maybe for a quarterback or an edge rusher. It's got to be at one of those really expensive positions for a player that would end up being really expensive. Now, we have still not signed uh, Jamal Williams or Reggie Gilliam. I don't know why, I don't know what you guys think you're going to get offered here. Um, we might look to go after a corner, though. Maybe Nick Needham? Nick Needham seems like he wants to be a giant. Um, some of these guys, I would be interested in like a one-year deal, right? I wouldn't really want anything that's too much of a commitment. He's very slow. He's very slow. Don't really want... I don't really love the options, to be honest. Eli Apple, you gotta be kidding me. It's a joke. I always forget Trey Flowers is 6'3". Seems like there's a good fit here. And we could we could add another corner to our group. I'd give him a one-year contract. I don't really think that's too bad. Might want to look at linebacker, though. Where is Tay Crowder? Is Tay Crowder still available? He might be signed. I don't see him. No, Tay Crowder is headed to the Saints. Tay Crowder is officially gone. Two-year contract to go to New Orleans. I thought I had moved Tay Crowder to outside linebacker. I was 100% sure I did. So I, maybe I moved him back. That's possible, I guess. Uh, is there anyone in here that feels like a good fit? Does anyone have the mentor tag? Don't really want to bring back Jordan Hicks. He was not very good. Don't want to bring in Christian Kirksey. Dante Hightower. It's just something we're going to revisit, I think, at some point. We might address it in the draft. I think we'll probably be good there from free agency. We're going to need a lot of money to re-sign some of our big players in, in future years. Like you got to remember that this is not just a franchise that's going to go till next year and then be done. Right, so we got to focus on the year after that, and who knows after that. But uh, we'll go ahead and go to the free agency recap here. I think we looked at it a little bit, but what this is really big about right now uh, are the private workouts. The private workouts going to be really important. So it's going to be somebody from my favorites. Bryson Hendricks, I think, is uh, the top guy here that I want to know more about. Bryson Hendricks, I want to know his true talent. This is a true talent. A determiner. Is that not really English, but you know what I'm saying? Uh, I also want to check out, I mean, Trayvon Brown's good, 
But it's going to be really tough to trade up and get some of these guys. We can't trade up and get everybody. Like, it just doesn't make sense to do that. But I want to know true talent probably on Jorvante Matthews. And if I'm going to trade up for anybody, uh, I think I want to know about Robert Forsett. He's very good. So those are going to be my three uh, players here. Robert Forsett, potential starting corner on the outside. Jorvante Matthews, potential good depth on the defensive line down the board. I already know about some of these other guys. And then I want to really know about Bryson Hendricks. If I'm going to move up into the top five for a safety, no less, I got to know everything there is to know about him. So those are my focus players. And we'll advance. Okay, so now we have a decision to make. Bryson Hendricks has been revealed as a top five talent as well. I've discussed this quite a bit. Where if let's say let's say ten players are a seventy six overall and seventy six makes it into the top five of all the overalls, so it goes eighty, eighty, like you know seventy nine, two seventy eight, a seventy seven, and then a seventy six, and then that's number five stretching. Or maybe there's eleven seventy sixes. Well, there could be like what like ten top five talents, right? He ran four three two at his pro day. Damn. It's pretty fast. Um, but yeah, Bryson Hendricks is a top five talent. So that's pretty good. We've got a real decision to make at free safety. Jorvante Matthews was one I looked at. He is around two to three talent. C block shed, C power moves, B tackle, A finesse moves. How does he round two to three, man? Elite acceleration and speed. Really good athlete with A finesse moves. B tackle, B awareness, B play rec. I guess block shedding is only a C, but he feels good. Feels like a really good player. And then the other player I looked at was the corner in Robert Forsett. We do not know true talent on him. We got up to 95%. A catching, B man, B press, C zone. Didn't really find out too much about him that we didn't already know. But the player looks pretty good. D play rec is a bit low. That's new information to me. But B awareness, B man, B block shed. It's a tough call. Uh, also, it's worth asking the question, by the way. If Bryson Hendricks has B man and B zone at 6'2" and can run in the four threes with great agility and great or me, and good change of direction. Who is to say he can't play corner? I don't know. It's um It's it's a thought. It's a thought. Um yeah, B B zone the like it's not the same for a corner like b man is not going to be what b man is for a uh for a cornerback like b man for a safety it might be high 60s b zone might be high 70s where it'd be a little bit lower i think for corners i, I don't know it's worth thinking about at least before we go into the draft uh, and here we go we are in we pick at number 28 overall Long way down the board. And then number 30. If we wanted to move up, it would probably take a lot. And we'll, we'll have to see how it goes. I mean, that that's kind of all I can say, right? We'll just, uh, we'll have to see how it goes. I can tell you right now that I am... Not going to be trading into the top three, that's for sure. Not going to be doing that. But we'll see what happens. Texans are on the clock. We're going to see their first pick. The Texans. What's happening? All right, we're going to restart this. Oh, and we're back. The Texans take Nick Gordon. Quarterback from Oregon. Of course, we're looking at one of his teammates. Uh, this is a pretty good player. Nick Gordon, 
We know he's got a really, really big arm. And the Texans are a team that were kind of up in the air about whether Davis Mills was going to be uh, their big-time starter. He's still on the team, but no longer has any player tag. Only a 70 overall. So, as you can see, the Texans decide to go in that direction. Upgrade quarterback. Saints now on the clock at number two. Stole Tay Crowder away from us. That's like the latest steal ever, maybe. And at number two, they will also go with a quarterback. And this kind of matches the theme of quarterback DB combo on the same team. Oregon, you have Glenn Gore and Nick Gordon. Iowa, you have Alexander Aubel. And you have a couple of good cornerbacks in Robert Forsett, in, um, in Burke as well is quite good. So there's definitely some talent there. And it seems like the Saints are no joke. They're trying to upgrade quarterback. You got to respect it. It's the most important position. You can't even argue against that. Can't discredit that. And Auble, another dude with the big arm. A lot of really talented uh, quarterbacks in this class in terms of, you know, arm talent. Accuracy coming along for a few of them. Maybe not the most athletic. But Alexander Auble... Alex Abel can throw a little bit. Jets on the clock at number three. Go with another quarterback. The Jets are addicted to drafting quarterbacks. Zach Wilson, Bryce Fry a year ago, who turned out to be terrible, by the way, even though he played well against us. And now Pat Northcutt from Colorado State is the newest New York Jet. A Colorado State quarterback. When you look at the Jets roster, Zach Wilson is a 75 overall, does not have a player tag, does not have future starter, franchise quarterback, nothing like that. So it's clear that the Jets don't believe in him. And after drafting Bryce Fry a year ago, who is a 65 overall with normal development, they decide that neither of those guys are good enough to get it done. And they take a quarterback as well. Again. Jets, man. They keep swinging. Maybe they'll hit on one of them. As we'll get to the Vikings at number four. And they go with the defensive end. Jarius Knighton from LSU. I'll tell you, wasn't too impressed by Jarius Knighton. But, you know, if they think he's a, a top four pick, you know, good for them, I guess. But it, he wasn't really somebody that was... That was on my draft board very high for a while. Good athlete. Of course, you got to factor in that he played alongside another really, really talented defensive end as well in Adrian Lake from LSU. So maybe his numbers are a little bit inflated as a result. It's tough to say. It's tough to say. Does he deserve to be a top five pick? Played well enough? Maybe so. Time will tell as the Steelers are on the clock at number five. They address their secondary at corner. This is just so screwed up with the managed staff, managed roster, managed staff, managed roster, managed staff, managed roster, managed staff, managed roster. Do they all work? They all seem to work. Is it worth moving up to number five for Bryson Hendricks? Glenn Gore is also an option down the board. I don't know. He's a really good athlete. Really good athlete. Well-rounded. But I I just I find it difficult to want to move up into the top 5 for him when there's another really good safety on the board. I really I I like him. I think he's going to be quite good if he goes here to the Steelers. But it would just, it would be tough for me to move up to number five given our draft capital and take him here at number five. And he is the fifth overall pick out of Florida State. We know the player's good. We know he's good. And he's headed to Pittsburgh. Might be a rude awakening for him going from Florida State, Tallahassee to Pittsburgh, Western Pennsylvania. 
He is quite good, though. And the Steelers are getting a good one. You know, we know about Minka Fitzpatrick, how good he had been for the Steelers. And when you look at the Steelers, he still is on the team. So I'm not sure if they plan on moving him to strong safety or what. But all I know is that they got a good one. They got a good one. Commanders at number six. I think this is the back-to-back -back year they've managed to get the sixth overall pick. Was Daniel Brinkley number six overall? Daniel Brinkley was really good. Right? Daniel Brinkley was really good. I think he was a number six pick. This time they go J.C. Bolden, an edge rusher out of Tennessee. Can never have enough pass rush. Panthers at number seven. Go with Dalton Norton. Another Oregon player going pretty high in this draft. Uh, and there are a number of good right tackles. Norton, of course, was blocking for the number one overall pick, Nick Gordon. Maybe a big reason that Nick Gordon ended up going so high was he had the time to throw because of Dalton Norton. And the, the Dalton Norton, by the way, is, a, is a, that's quite a name to say. Ravens up at number eight. What are the Ravens looking like roster-wise? What direction would they be likely to go in? They have Marcus Williams. They have Kyle Hamilton. Probably not a team that's going to target a safety. We'll see who they end up going with at number eight. And it is Antoine Peck, a linebacker from Clemson. Number one middle linebacker in the class in terms of projection. Holy dude. What is up with all these managed staff and roster? How many are there? This is unbelievable. I get it, dude. Oh, hold on. I'll go into it. I'll check it out. Look, all right, are we good? Are we? Nope. There's so many of them. I can't even do managed staff. I can't even do managed staff. This is insane. Dolphins at number nine. What direction would the Dolphins go in? You think it has something to do with having multiple users? I don't think so. But I guess it is possible. Chuck Clark, Javon Holland. You know, I'm not sure the Dolphins would be likely to take a safety either. Uh, but that is a team that I'm going to call up for this pick and, and see what they're willing to do. Top 10 pick. It is number 9. They have the number 9 overall pick. They need a quarterback, an outside linebacker, a center, right tackle, and a tight end. Here's, here's what we'll do. We'll make a, we'll make a more fair, uh, fair trade this time around. We will give the Cardinals a first this year and next year. Next year projected to be number 3. Uh, and this is a little bit more fair. Two first round picks to move up to number 10. And next year projected to be quite good. We'll see how that ends up working out. And we can finally make my selection at number 10. And of course, it's going to be free safety, Glenn Gore. I, I like the corner, Robert Forsett. I really do. I think he's going to be quite good. Great speed, elite acceleration, good man, great catching. I think he's going to be really good. Is he savvy with the ball in the air or is he lost? He struggles to find it in the air. But yeah, that's not going to be my pick here. We're going Glenn Gore. Safety out of Oregon. A little bit younger than Bryson Hendricks. A little bit more zone-oriented. Uh, I think he's going to be really good. Is he going to be as good as Bryson Hendricks? Tough to say. But I do think he's going to be a better fit for my team. Where Xavier McKinney can go play strong safety where he's a bit slower. Glenn Gore, good speed over the top. I think he's going to be a really good fit for us with great speed. So, welcome to the team, Glenn Gore. Hidden development, 92 speed, not too bad over the top. 70, uh, 73 strength, 85 jumping, 85 change of direction, 92 agility, 93 acceleration. And yeah, you know what? We're trying to draft a ball hawk and we've taken someone who admittedly struggles to find the ball in the air that's a little bit of a concern no doubt 
But he gets there. He gets there. You know what? Just because he is not, okay, I'm going to absolutely intercept the ball every single time. That's all right. He's going to get there. He will make some of those plays. He's got good speed over the top. He's got some good hit power. Big hitter trait. We know about that. So he should be a beast. And he is our first legitimate draft pick of the offseason. Fun little uh, snafu with the Dolphins there. And I think he's an immediate immediate improvement to our secondary. He gives us a speed over the top that we just did not have previously. As we'll move on, Robert Forsett is the next pick. Corner out of Iowa going to the 49ers. He was obviously somebody that we looked at, right? He was somebody that we looked at quite a bit. Good size, good ability overall. Certainly really, really good speed. He was one of a great duo at Iowa with Paul Burke. And uh, I guess the question really becomes, who is the better corner of the bunch? Four set a little bit faster, not quite as big, not so great with the ball in the air. But we're looking at him here at Iowa. He's made some pretty good plays on the football. He seems like a ball hawk to me. I don't know. But Paul Burke still on the board if we wanted to go for a corner. And he's a little bit bigger at six foot two. Four set, definitely talented, no question. And the 49ers take him here at number 11. He was expected to go, you know, way down the board, but somebody in the offseason that moved up a lot late into the process. So not shocking to see him end up being a top 15 selection. The Bucks at number 12 end up going Nolan Hanna, another guy that really moved up draft boards in the offseason. Edge rusher out of Clemson. The Seattle Seahawks at 13 go Trayvon Brown, defensive tackle from Oklahoma State. Somebody that was pretty high on my draft board, admittedly. I think he was a really good player. And he might have been somebody that we tried to go after if, if we didn't bring in Jeffrey Simmons. We brought in Jeffrey Simmons. As a result, Trayvon Brown ends up going to the Seahawks here at number 13. And to be honest, there's a chance that he just would have anyway. Not sure we're going to trade up for him. But he is really, really good. Lions at 14 go Earl Arrington, a defensive end out of SMU, Southern Methodist. Chiefs at 15 had an active free agency, and they're going to continue that. Or this offseason, I should say. Beefing up their offensive line, going with Allen Saunders out of Ohio State. Big-bodied, huge right tackle. For the Buckeyes, clearing the way for Travion Henderson, pancaking some members of this Notre Dame defense. And you might recognize some on this defense. Number 51, Dontrell Cobb in that video from a year ago. Not this past season, but that was footage of Dontrell Cobb when he was at Notre Dame playing alongside Caleb Claiborne. Number 51 is our superstar linebacker that you are so familiar with now. Broncos at 16. Go with Johnny Hamilton, linebacker out of Florida. Not somebody that was super on my radar. Wonder if he's any good for the Broncos. Patriots at 17. Go with another linebacker. We see two in a row. Brenton Guy out of Auburn. Didn't really look too much at the middle linebackers. I think we kind of found our guys, um, you know, early in the process in Caleb Claiborne if we end up going that direction in John Bost if we end up going that direction. So those were really never players I was considering. Chargers at 18 get their Justin Herbert replacement. Herbert headed to Pittsburgh. The Steelers have had a really big offseason as well. And you know what? You got to replace Justin Herbert. That's a big player to replace though. Huge loss. And Joe Trent won the award for best quarterback this past year. San Jose State's Joe Trent. Apparently the best quarterback in the nation playing, you know, against nobodies in the Mountain West. No disrespect. <laughs> oh, I guess that's disrespectful. Joe Trent. 
you know, Chargers taking a chance on him. That's going to be an interesting player to see what he's all about. Uh, kind of a scrambler. So could be a fun fit for their offense. We'll have to see if he's any good. Packers at 19. They'll take Matias Villalobos, a right tackle out of Alabama. Spanish origin there. Matias Villalobos. Matias. Interesting player. And here at 20 is when I'd probably start to consider a trade up in front of the Eagles. Rams looking for help at linebacker. We have the 28th pick. I'd give you a fourth rounder. Not quite. I would give you a fifth rounder also. That's not going to do it. Okay, so this will be my offer. It is Julian Love, who they can't afford, actually. What can we do about that? Six mil. I'm not sure that's going to be clearable. Joe Noteboom. I mean, we can afford to take on that contract. They're paying so much to so many players. <laughs> this is a bad team. This is a bad team. Can I take on Joe Noteboom's contract? We're going to have to to get it done. This is the trade we're making. We're getting the Rams out of some cap hell. We are sending the number 28 overall pick and Julian Love. I think with the addition of Glenn Gore, there is just really no place for Julian Love on this team. He's not on a long-term contract, so the Rams are using him as a rental. Their team is, is not very good. They're very top-heavy. They really, really are. Uh, getting Julian Love is actually a huge help for them. He is an instant, massive upgrade over Joshua Bledsoe, and even Quentin Lake is a starter. This is a huge get for them. Uh, Love played well at some times, played not so great at others. I think the speed really just did him in in the end. It was like, you know, high 80s, but sometimes it really showed up, and um, I don't think he had the zone cover skills to make up for it. He becomes a top five player on their team in terms of overall. And uh, we take on the contract of Joe Noteboom. Noteboom is going to be is going to be somebody that probably doesn't end up making the team, to be honest. Wouldn't be awful for depth, and we could afford the contract as well. It's really not that bad of a trade for us, if you think about it. He's 29. He's a 74 overall. He's not an awful starter. So if there were an injury to Andrew Thomas, the way that there was an injury to Andrew Thomas in the conference championship game, we can actually have a capable left tackle come in and play. So, somebody that can stick around. You gotta be kidding me. We'll recreate it. It's annoying, but... All right, so we've recreated everything. Uh, I will say it's an utter embarrassment for EA uh, and the entire team at Madden, regardless of who's at fault. Uh, it's a disgrace that one of the biggest companies in gaming, maybe even the world, Electronic Arts, is capable of releasing a product every year with more bugs than the previous year. It's absolutely disgusting that countless franchises have been ruined uh, like mine. I managed to find some workaround. Maybe it was fixed. Maybe it wasn't. Uh, bottom line is it's ridiculous that we see draft resets, that you have to redo progress, and that regardless of how far deep you are into your franchise, theoretically it's possible for it to be reverted at any point. And this is not just a problem for me. This is not a one-off experience. It's a problem for so many in the chat. Over nearly, I would say, 5,000 people in chat right now and I know for a fact that hundreds, maybe thousands, have been affected by this glitch. It's seemingly unavoidable if you're playing franchise. And it's not just a problem for the people that play the game as well. It's a problem for the people that could play the game. If you're watching this video, if you're one of maybe, you know, 100, 200, 300,000 that are coming across this video, 
on YouTube right now and you're seeing the glitches that we're seeing in this video, are you going to go out and get the game? No, you're not. You know why? Because it's a broken mess. Here we are at number 20. Caleb Claiborne is a player I actually like quite a bit. Uh, and I think we're going to be adding him to our team here. He's a run stopper archetype with B block shed, A pursuit, A tackle, A zone coverage, somebody that I've been pretty high on for some time now. And he is very different to some of the linebackers that we already have in the fact that he combines very good athleticism with very good cover ability as well. So in a 3-4 defense, I'd be fairly comfortable leaving him by himself, not using him, letting him get after it, and just play great coverage and form the C block at linebacker. Dontrell Cobb, Derek Cooper, and Caleb Claiborne. We have DC DC in Dontrell Cobb and Derek Cooper. We're adding CC to that in Caleb Claiborne. What do you mean my draft clock has expired? It's the draft is paused. It's paused. I'm not having fun anymore. We're going to get through this shit. All right. We, yeah, we might have to pick up the pace. You can't save after each pick because it's it's online. Okay, so what we're going to have to do because uh, of this crap is pretty much speed through the draft. And that basically ruins all of the prep work that I do every single time. It ruins the buildup. It ruins the show. It ruins the experience. But in order to get through it, that's what's going to have to happen. How many times can I trade for Joseph Noteboom before I want to jump off my roof? Uh, the answer is no more times. I want to do it now. All right. Am I allowed to take Caleb Claiborne? Survey says yes. Hidden development. 86 speed for Caleb Claiborne. 88 acceleration. 82 agility. I think that's good enough speed for a linebacker to be really effective. And the C block has finally been formed. So this is what it is. I can't, as much as I would like to go through and do the, the usual show, Mike Grimes, the Jaguars, I've got to speed through because I don't want to get disconnected again and have to do all that progress again. It's frozen for me, by the way. Well, there he goes, Jeremiah Reed. Um, but I also don't want to go too fast as Adrian Lake does end up going to the Cowboys because I don't want to miss out on potential players that I like. Let's go to the favorites here. I like John Bost. Probably wouldn't take Isaiah Mooney. Might take a center down the board. Glenn Spellman. Gervonta Matthews is a player that I like quite a bit. Um, where are my picks? I will edit this. Uh, I edit... 99.9% .9 of my videos at the moment. Um, so two and three. Six later. Let me take a three and a four and turn that into a two from Chicago. Just, uh, that's annoying. You know, it would go through. It needs to be a later two. Like the Bills two. Hmm. My third round pick is so late. All right, here's where we're not gonna we're not gonna trade up. We are gonna simulate to the second round, end of the second round, no less, and we'll evaluate the draft board at that point. So on the board, Rod McCullough is on my draft board. Sean Goodrich, who is the FCS Player of the Year, John Bost still here. The defensive tackle I like is gone. John Bost is the pick here deep in a round two. A pursuit, a tackle, a zone coverage, elite acceleration, agility, speed. He's really good depth. When I take a player like this, I think special teamer with real starter upside. And I think that's what we're getting. Hidden development, 86 speed, 91 agility, and acceleration. I think it's a really good addition to our team. I know we've taken multiple linebackers, but sometimes the draft is just taking the best player available 
and then figuring out, you know, how they end up fitting into your team. So that's the the strategy that we've taken this year. Uh, it would have been nice to get, you know, some of the players we missed out on, but that's just the nature of the game. As we get to round three, Kyle Dawson, I'm not particularly interested in some of these players I would take down the board. See, like another linebacker like this, he's not an athlete, really, really awful at doing athletic things. So probably wouldn't consider him, but a pursuit, a tackle down the board is at the very least intriguing. I think I would probably look at, you know, maybe another edge rusher just in case. Cedric Royster, A to C finesse moves is intriguing. I'm going to end up going offensive line, I think. And I think it's going to be Mark Phillips here. He's a day three projection. I guess we don't have to take him here. Here's what we're going to do instead. I'm going to trade away this pick. We don't have a first rounder next year. We could use some value next year. And the Bills were offering us a future pick. We'll just swap. We're going to swap with the Raiders. We'll take their third round pick next year. And we will uh, continue on. It's just good to get more draft value next season, especially when we uh, had to do a lot of trading in this one. So that is what it is. Um, the guard is now off the board as a result, which I don't really care about because Greg Minshew here out of Texas has a pass block anyway. So kind of fills the same type of idea. And we're just drafting backups at this point, so really not too mad about that and i think you know we wouldn't even have to take him here either is the running back still available the running back is also gone so that's maybe a little bit disappointing however zach beck here b ball carrier vision break tackle and carrying power back with good speed we're gonna take a chance on zach beck 91 speed, 90 acceleration, 86 agility, change of direction to 79, jumping to 79, strength is a 78. I don't mind that. Six foot, 225. We need depth. Yeah, I think that's a fine pick in the fourth round. Wouldn't complain about that for a second. Man, this draft is struggling to go through the picks here. That is not lag on... On YouTube's end, Adonis Hopkins was a player on my board. That is the game. Uh, and I think I think Minshew is going to be the one for me here. Actually, is this corner any good? Max Taylor has C-man coverage, B-press. Speed is not good. How tall is he? 6'1". He is bad. Bad player. If his speed was any good, I would consider it. But uh, we're going to go with maybe back-to-back -back projected undrafted players. Greg Minshew is the first one. I'm trying to get more depth on the O-line. He is a pass protector. Normal dev is fine. 84 strength. We just need someone that can come in and block in the event that there's a big injury. So... I would rather have pass protector, I think, in that scenario than someone that's really great at run blocking just because I could see, you know, it being easier to run the ball than it is to pass the ball um, without a great offensive line. We'll go with J.J. Middleton here in the sixth. Same idea, also normal dev. Really not a strong player at all, but pass protection should be a strength of his despite not being actually strong. And then in the seventh round, we have two of these. And I guess we'll take both of them. Probably. I will end up going with the corner here, Max Taylor out of Minnesota. I said he's bad, and he is. We're going to take him anyway. 89 speeds, actually not so bad. I'm actually a lot more excited about this pick. I thought he might have like 86. 89 is not terrible. That's not bad for a seventh rounder. 
And then we'll go and take our final pick. It is between Sean Katz and Marquis Skandrick. Katz has a big leg for a punter, but we re-signed our punter. So he does have elite kick power though. Shoot. <laughs> Marquis Skandrick is so slow. It's a major concern. He's so slow, but his A pursuit, A tackle, there's some heart there out of West Virginia. 6'1", 255. Welcome to team Marquis Skandrick. Does have 78 speed. I guess that's not the worst. Run stopper archetype. And that is our draft. Yeah, sorry about the presentation on this one. I mean, nobody's more disappointed than I am about the way this went. I don't know. Dude, it's... uh, it Seems broken again. I don't even know if we got it done. And we are back. That was uh, really painful. But we should be out of the weeds now. If it glitches again, ooh. If it glitches again, we will uh, see how we handle it. However, we see the results. We see ratings. And Glenn Gore is an 81 overall. That is really, really good. Uh, I didn't expect he would be that high, to be honest. But he is really... He's got 85 zone coverage. His personality is intense. Conservative play ball tendency, predictable, high motor. Balanced penalty tendency. He's got 92 speed, 85 zone coverage, 70 tackle, 76 pursuit, 74 play rec, 93 acceleration. Man coverage at 70 isn't even bad. I'm interested to see the other safety, Bryson Hendricks. 75 hit power, 76 awareness. I think regardless of what Bryson Hendricks is, I would not be mad about this at all. I, I am stoked. I don't know that I've seen a safety with 85 zone coverage this year. Now, I will say, following uh, this video, what I'm doing on stream with the guys who stay here is we customize the players. I try to keep the same type of feel. So Glenn Gore will keep dreadlocks, but we'll change gear and all that with the chat. So if you're interested in, in that, you should be here for the off-season stream. I know not everybody can make it, but I'm stoked about that. I, I am curious to see his motivations and tags. So he's got the day one starter tag. Historic championships he likes. He likes Cody Bailey, and he wants a mentor at the position. We can make that happen. But that, that's a heck of a draft pick in Glenn Gore. That's, that's really good value at number 10, I think. That's some Earl Thomas type stuff. Caleb Claiborne is a 74 overall, which is not bad. 70 pass coverage, 69 pass rusher and, or excuse me, power rusher and speed rusher. He's got 86 tackle, 73 hit power, 86 speed, 88 acceleration. Block shedding's in the mid 70s. Pursuit is in the 80s. Zone coverage is only a 63. Not terrible, but not great. Kind of underwhelming for A, to be honest. Play rec and awareness are good. Uh, his injury is kind of low. And then motivations and tags. He wants to be in a different offense or a different defense, but at middle linebacker, that might change. He's going to be a middle linebacker for me. Uh, he wants money and he wants to be in a warm weather state. But he went to school in Notre Dame. Didn't want it that badly. Uh, we're going to go ahead and change his position. And we're going to change all the numbers, all the stuff, uh, all the equipment. At middle linebacker, he stays at 74 overall. John Bost is also not an outside linebacker in a 3-4. He's a 72 overall with 86 speed, 91 acceleration. His pass rush moves are really bad. Block shedding is a 63. Zone coverage is a 69. So a lot better than Bost, or excuse me, a lot better than um, Claiborne, but both were A. Awareness is pretty good. Pursuit's pretty good. Play rec could use some, some boosts, some Bosts, should I say. Strength is not bad. Uh, stamina is a 95. Injury is only an 80. Agility is a 91. Look at all his traits, by the way. Swim move, spin move, bull rush. It's amazing he has all those, all those traits for a guy that isn't a pass rusher at all. His motivations and tags. Uh, he's from Iowa. Went to school at Alabama. Must have been a very highly touted recruit. Super Bowl chase, no state income tax, and of course, close to home, Iowa. 
Uh, and then Zach Beck, actually pretty good value here. Six foot, 225. He has 91 speed. Oh, uh, hold on a second. 91 speed, 86 trucking to go with 90 acceleration. Agility is an 80. Juke and spin move are low. Change of direction is not too bad. Strength is really good. Carrying isn't too bad. Ball carrier vision is not too bad. Break tackle, I'd like to be higher. But this is a home run pick for the fourth round. He has possession catch trade. He's a team player. Of course he is. I could have told you that. Fight for yards. Motivations and tags. No state income tax. Team is franchise quarterback and highest offer. So likes that money. That's not bad though. It's Zach Beck. Not somebody who's on my board. And then um, Greg Minshew is not a highly rated center. But does have 79 pass block. So, I think that's fine. Run block's really bad. But his pass blocking's really good. For, like, 79 pass block is elite. So, his overall is really awful. I guess he's in the top 56% of centers, but it's not great. Max Taylor's only a 61. I thought he would be higher after I saw 89 speed. Man coverage would usually be 68 Zone coverage is real bad. Play Rex, awful. Tackle, catching. Ugh. Max Taylor, it might be an uphill battle for you to make the team. Wants to be close to home in Missouri. You might be moving there after this. That's all I'll say. Zach Middleton's a 62. Same idea. He's got 80 pass block. Very high. He's, his personality is intense. Wants to be close to home in Utah. Maybe. Maybe we'll send you back. And then Marquis Skandrick is a 68. He was a little bit faster than I thought he would be, but 78 is still not good. Good strength, good tackle, pursuit, hit power, acceleration, strength. He's got swim move and high motor. His motivations and tags. I, yeah, who cares? But now I think what everyone wants to know, what does Bryson Hendricks look like? He is an 80, so very, very good as well, and 94 speed, so plus two on Glenn Gore, 81 zone coverage. That's pretty good. That's what a B is. 81 zone coverage is B. That's B. That feels like a lie. I don't know. Pursuit to 79. Man coverage is a 73. Hit power, I think, is a, are they the same? Was it both 75? I think it was both 75. Oh, we didn't check injury. I don't know. Uh, speed's really good, but it's not like, you know, 97. 94 is really good. He's a good player. No state income tax, Pennsylvania. Big market and scheme fit. So one of those would have been satisfied, at least. So he's he's quite good. But, yeah, I'm comfortable with the decision we made, especially at the spot. Uh, and we actually got the highest overall player in the draft, Glenn Gore. Hendricks was right there, too. Oglesby ended up being a 77. I wasn't really too impressed by him. Only normal dev, but he ends up being pretty good. Oh, we'll check the dev trait. We'll check the dev trait on uh, Bryson Hendricks here. Let's see. He's got day one starter tag. Bryson Hendricks' dev trait is... And I, I keep in mind, I never check my own. This is just for the thing. Mm, all right. It's Superstar X Factor. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> That's a pretty good dev trait. Pretty good dev trait there. Pretty good. Uh, Luke Tyson. I talked a lot about Luke Tyson, by the way, in the lead-up. Only normal development. Keep in mind. But Luke Tyson looks really good. 91 speed. He also has 81 zone coverage, or 80, I should say. 82 hit power. Dude. It, it's just, did they change it? Is is 80 or 81 just B now, according to the game? I thought these would have been in like the mid to high 70s at best. That's 80. And also, he has hit power too. Doesn't have big hitter trait though. Isn't that interesting? The top two safeties both have big hitter trait with worse hit power than Luke Tyson does. Yeah, dude, I should have drafted all these safeties. 
<laughs> uh, that was that was really fortunate for us. Dolphins got two of the top players. Robert Forsett ends up being a 76 with hidden dev. 94 speed, 76 man, 71 zone. 88 agility, 94 acceleration, 85 jumping. Yeah, I mean, he's very good. He's very good, too. His dev trait is... Star. So I guess we made the right move not taking him, going Glenn Gore instead, but I think I always was going to. Uh, Jermichael Crisp ends up being a 75. It actually isn't that stacked of a class. So the top two players are really good, but then there's a pretty big drop-off, and there's only... There's only two 77s, two 76s, and then, I mean, let, was that five 75s? Maybe six or seven? That's not too bad. Glenn Spellman was the running back that I looked at. Damn, he does have hidden dev. I probably end up drafting him if, um, if the game didn't glitch out on me. He looks really good. 91 speed, 90 acceleration, break tackles at 81. Stiff arm is really good. Trucking's good. Ball carrier vision's good. Juke and spin move are also good. Glenn Spellman, 5'11", 230. Damn. He should have been mine. Only star dev, but that should be that should have been a player on my team. I know I ended up going, you know, John Bost over him, essentially, but um, I, I would have drafted him for sure. I highlighted him in the, the lead-up. There's Caleb Claiborne. I guess we drafted over him as well. I want to check out some of these defensive tackles. So Trayvon Brown is a 76. Does have hidden dev. 94 strength. Block shed. Pretty good. Speed good. Power and finesse moves are not amazing. And I didn't get to take Jorvante Matthews either. He only has star dev. Nick Gordon. Normal development. Tough for the Texans. But 73 overall for a rookie quarterback is not bad. Alexander Aubel also has normal development. But 74 overall for rookie quarterback is not bad. Pat Northcutt, the lowest overall, does have hidden. Have the Jets found their guy? Star Dev. He looks really tall, by the way. Um, what else do we want to see here? Herrera was a 74. Dude, a lot of normal devs in this class. Paul Burke is a 74. He does have hidden, though. 91 speed. 74 man, 69 zone. That's not too bad for rookie CB. He has star dev. Jets do have Zach Wilson. They do. Yeah, we can do that, Eagles. Um, I just want to... I want to check out some of the defensive tackles. Um, Isaiah Mooney was somebody I looked at. He does have hidden dev as well. 91 speed. Very fast. Star dev. Peck is 88 speed. I wanted to check out Adrian Lake too. He ends up being a 75 normal dev. Joe Trent from San Jose State has hidden. Well, he did win quarterback of the year. 85 speed, 87 agility. 93 change of direction. Kind of interesting. He has superstar development. Ooh. Maybe they knew a thing or two. They passed on Justin Herbert for a reason. They said go test free agency. All right. Robert Burst, I never considered. John Contreras, I'll take a look at. Normal dev, 79 finesse moves though, 75 speed. I want, to, I want to see Gervonta Matthews. I probably would have drafted him as well. He was someone that looked very good to me. Oregon State, normal development, 79 speed and finesse moves, 86 acceleration. Another player who's not bad. Is there anybody else I wanted to check out? We'll check out the in-division drafts. Cowboys took Adrian Lake in round one. And then... Really didn't do too well down the board. Vince Jarrett out of Marshall may be their best pick down the board and don't really think he'll ever be a threat. The Eagles take Chandler Meadows, a good center. They had a good class. Paul Burke, Justin Moreland. They went big on offensive line in this class. Wow, they, they took a lot of offensive linemen. 
But, you know, three players at 73 overall or higher is pretty good. And then the Commanders ended up going J.C. Bolden, 75 overall, hidden development, 83 power moves, 77 block shed, 81 speed, 85 acceleration, pursuit's good. Okay, J.C. Bolden can play. J.C. Bolden's pretty good. He ends up having star dev. Will Hilliard, they took the wrong safety, but he has hidden dev though. He's really slow, but has really good hit power. Will Hilliard out of Iowa. Man, Iowa had a really good DB class. They had three DBs drafted in the top 50 picks as star dev. Not too bad. And I think we'll advance to the next week. We have mentor rookie coming up. All right, what do you what do you guys think? Should we reveal the dev trait now? We can do it once per year. Do we do it to end the off-season episode? A lot of yeses in chat. <laughs> reveal but don't look. It shows up. It, it's like on this it takes away the blue thing. All right, we're going to do it to end the video. If you don't want to see it, Look away now, but it's going to be on the adjust lineup screen in the next episode. So we're going to do it. Glenn Gore, Caleb Flayborn, John Bost, Glenn Gore. I think that's what people want to know. Is he a generational safety? We've purchased it. And here is the moment of truth. Is Glenn Gore a star? Is he a superstar? Or is he a superstar X-Factor like Bryson Hendricks survey says? Oop. That's Xavier McKinney. He is a superstar. That's not bad. That's not bad. It isn't superstar X-Factor like Bryson Hendricks, but he's also slightly higher overall, slightly better in zone coverage can't complain about superstar so that's going to do it for the offseason episode we're going to do some customization so glenn gore and others might look slightly different the next time you see him but that is the draft thank you so much for watching hope you enjoyed and i'll see you in the next one take it easy